MCP4725, 12-bit DAC with an I2C interface generating a sine wave with 512 data points. This is the version I'm using from eBay, which has VCC ground, the I2C bus, and an output analog voltage. VCC can be 3.3 or 5 volts. I'm using it at 5 volts. And this module has an onboard jumper for one address select bit. So you can have two unique addresses on the same bus if you have two of these modules. The setup is very straightforward. I'm using Arduino Uno. The I2C bus is going straight to the I2C pins. And also there's onboard pull-up resistors, so I don't need any here. This module from the Fritzing components is different from the one I have, so I don't have this address pin, I just have the onboard jumpers. So the analog output is going to go to one channel of an oscilloscope. I also generated a test digital output on output 2 to go to another scope channel, and then there's just 5 volts and ground powering the module. Here's the device itself. It's 12-bit digital to analog converter, and it has E squared PROM memory, so you can store a data value and have the device keep that analog output. It does have rail-to-rail -rail output, so when I'm using 5 volt supply, I do get an output analog voltage up to 5 volts and down to ground. And it confirms here you can go 2.7 volts to 5.5 volts. The I squared C interface can go at standard 100k BPS or fast at 400k BPS, which is the fastest I can do on the UNO. And then you can jump all the way to this high speed 3.4 megabits per second, but I can't even do that, so I'm operating at 400. With a 400k BPS data rate, we can change the output of the DAC only so fast. So we can't generate high frequency function generator type signals out of this. And as they say in the applications, you could use this for maybe a set point or an offset trim, calibrating something, or doing some other slow motion of a feedback and control system. So if I wanted to do something faster, I'd probably use an SPI instead of an I squared C, or an actual parallel with a whole lot of discrete data bits so we can go the fastest possible. But I'm just checking this out, so I'm generating a sine wave. As with many I2C devices, there's three address bits. Two of these are internal, and A0 we have access to to pull it up or down. So however the devices on my specific modules were configured by the manufacturer, when I set A0 high or low, my device address is going to be either 64 or 65 hex. And this would be an example application using it to digitally set an analog voltage which ends up being a trip point of an op amp comparator. As you change this DAC, you're going to change the threshold trip point and then you have something going on on the comparator and you're waiting for it to exceed your trip point and something will change on the output. So you wouldn't need to be changing this very often or very quickly, so an I squared C interface being slow is good enough for something like this. When sending the 12-bit data from the Arduino to the DAC, there's two ways to do it. There's a fast write mode, and then there's this other normal mode, which has an extra byte in it, and it gives you the ability to optionally write to an E squared prom. And I'm using an Adafruit library that appears to be just doing this longer version all the time, whether we're going to write to the E squared prom or not. So I'm thinking if I just used that other fast write mode, I could probably get a faster waveform frequency, but Again, if I was really interested in getting a faster waveform, I wouldn't be using I squared C anyway. So I just left it alone, but I needed to make note of this because I wanted to calculate what frequency of a waveform should I be able to get with whatever method Adafruit is using. So looking at this, every time we're going to send something to the DAC, we need a start bit, and then we have an acknowledge between all these bytes, and we have a stop bit. And then we have four bytes in a row which contain the actual address of the device, this configuration byte, and then these other two bytes contain the 12 data bits and some unused extras. So it looks like there's 38 bits involved every time we want to send out a 12-bit sample to the DAC out of our waveform signal. 
So this is one of the example sketches that came with the Adafruit library to generate a sine wave. And this is the one I have, Adafruit MCP4725 installed for the 12-bit I2C DAC. So it's got a sine wave and triangle wave. The triangle is really simple. With 12 bits, we can go from 0 to 4095. So to do a triangle wave, all that happens is there's a counter that counts up the full way and puts that value, which is 0 volts, to 4095, which will be the maximum, in this case, 5 volts. It'll do every step along the way going up, and then it'll do every step along the way going back down, so you get a triangle up, down, up, down. There's no sense showing what a triangle wave looks like, so then I went to this sine wave, and I, again, you know, they have different sine wave tables here to give really good sine wave output resolution, and then all the way down to this 32 sample sine wave, which is going to basically be a staircase up and a staircase down. Again, there's no real sense in showing what all these look like. So I set my resolution to give the 512 sample pattern, which is our very fine resolution sine wave. So it starts in the middle at 2048 and ramps up toward the maximum, then starts ramping down back to 2048, which would be the center line of the sine wave. And then it goes all the way down to zero the bottom of the sine wave, and then it ramps back up toward the 2048, starts over. So you keep cycling through here and sending these data values out to the 12-bit DAC, and you generate a really smooth sine wave. I've got my address, 64 hex, and I did add this extra digital pin 2 output just to trigger the scope, and that's this yellow trace down here. All of these pulses, if I zoom in, represent every single data point out of the 512 data points being sent out to the DAC. And I did that for a reason. So in this loop, there's just a bunch of if statements to figure out which resolution we chose. And I'm doing this 512 data point one. So all we do in our loop over and over is cycle through the 512 samples and send them out to the DAC using the Adafruit library, and that handles doing the I squared C and figuring out right here it's false. We don't want to save anything in the E squared prom. We send out all the samples in our waveform array, and then we do it again and do it again. So then we just get a continuous sine wave, and that's it. So I added this pin 2 going high just before I send out a sample to the DAC, and then as soon as I'm back, I send out a low. And of course, the next thing that happens is we go start the loop again, and I pretty much immediately set this trigger output high again. So what I'm doing here, I just wanted to see how long we spend out in this routine sending those 12 bits to the DAC, so I could figure out what's going on as this waveform is being generated. Having this continuously just go and read the samples and send them out to the DAC at full speed possible at 400 kilobits per second, I'm only getting a sine wave of 13 hertz. So I wondered, okay, what is the limiting factor? How does it all look in the math? What should I be able to get as a frequency? Because I know there's going to be overhead in the Arduino. Is 13 hertz kind of what I should expect? So that's why I was looking at the fact that we're sending about 38 bits for every sample out of that array that we're trying to send out. And so if this were sending out 38 bits full blast over and over with no overhead from the Arduino, and I don't know about the timing here when we get an acknowledgement between each byte, there's got to be some latency there. So not knowing all of this, just ideal case, if I were sending this 38 bits over and over as fast as I could and generating a sine wave, 38 bits per sample in the waveform times 512 samples means for every single sine wave cycle, I am sending 19,456 bits out. So if I'm sending them out at a rate of 400 kilobits per second, then 400 kilobits per second divided by this many bits per cycle, 20.5 cycles I should be able to get out 
in one second. So I should be able to get 20.5 hertz, but I'm only getting 13 hertz. So that's why I generated this test waveform. So if I zoom in on the signal, so it looks really smooth at this resolution with 512 samples. I can zoom right in and I don't really see any staircase. So if I'm going to zoom in enough to see all this data, this is going to become just a flat line. There's no point in even having this, but I am going to connect that channel to the data line. So now the yellow trace is my test output signal and the blue trace, instead of being the sine wave analog out, it's the actual I squared C data line. So going back to this sketch, my yellow trace to trigger the scope, it goes high just before I try to send something to the DAC and it goes low as soon as I come back. So as long as this yellow trace is high, all of these areas right here, that's when the DAC is out being written to. And that's what's happening here on the data bus. It's idle. Then you get those four data bytes to do the addressing and configuring if we're going to use E squared prom or not, and then the 12 bit DAC data. So if we zoom in on this, we've got some of the uh, clock right here. It's enough to see we are running at 400 kilohertz. And so here, when this yellow trigger goes high, that means we've gone out into the Adafruit library at this point and we are going to send these four bytes. So it takes a bit of time to configure this and then it goes out and does the I squared C thing. It comes back and there's still a little bit of time. Come back over here where there's less jitter. There's still a little bit of time before we end up back where we're about to send out our next sample. So to get a 20 hertz sine wave, we would need to be sending out these four bytes really quickly with no delays, but obviously there's a little bit of delay between each byte, and there's this extra, it looks like about one extra byte's worth of time right here. So that's why in the end we only get 13 hertz. So I suppose this is the Arduino overhead, and when we're going to use I squared C, we use this begin transmission at the address of our module, and then we use the write command to send out the bytes, and then we do end transmission. And this does not happen in real time. It's more like it sets up a buffer. So begin transmission cues the bytes for transmission with the write function, and then you transmit them by calling end transmission. So this is the Adafruit library with the routine that gets called from our sketch when we want to send a byte. It looks like we always go and set the speed of the data transmission to 400 kilohertz, so that's going to take some time. Then we do this begin transmission at our address, so we've queued up one byte, which is our address. Then, whether we're doing an E squared prom right or not, we queue up our second byte to configure the device, and then we queue up the upper and lower bits out of the 12-bit data, then we do end transmission, and that's when it gets all sent out. So that must be what's going on here. This trigger goes high, so we've gone and started the routine to transmit the byte. It takes time to queue it all up and set the speed again to 400 kilohertz, just in case. Then it actually sends the four bytes when we say end transmission, and then it takes time, I guess, to get back and get going, and we're back in the loop. We grab our next byte, and we have to go through that delay again to queue it up and then send it out. So we get our effective 13 hertz sine wave, good quality at 512 samples, and now I know how simple it is to get this DAC up and running. Something new learned.